Rockin' Thaw Ya Hawa, Rockin' Thaw Ya Hawa Sha, Rockin' Thaw Rockin' Thaw Ya Hawa Sha, All praises to Ya Hawa, Ba'a Shem, Ya Hawa Sha, Ba'a Shem Rekakadash, Ya Hawa being the name of a God, uh, God Almighty, Ya Hawa Sha being the name of His only begotten Son. Now, when you go into the scriptures, it's, it's rules and instructions to how you deal with uh, God, our power, the Most High. And, um, especially rules to how you deal with His Word. Now, you got in 1 Thessalonians, it say, uh, in chapter 5, Chapter 5, verse 21, it says, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Prove all things. So, when you're dealing with the Bible, you have to follow the rules of the Bible. And so, you just can't go in here and pull a precept and say, Oh, I'm going to... I'm Explain this one precept and everything gonna come off this precept. Now you go to um, Isaiah chapter 28 verse 9. It say, who shall he teach knowledge? So if you're trying to learn what the Bible is talking about truly, and you're trying to learn the truth from the Bible, he's he's telling you he going this is how he's gonna teach the person that he's gonna give the knowledge to. Who shall he teach knowledge? And who shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast so you got to start from the milk the the, the simple things you got to get a simple understanding before you can go into the deep thing now you got verse 10 it's isaiah 28 and verse 10 say for precept must be upon precept a precept is a thought you see it is a thought. So one thought got to be backed up by another thought. Precept for precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So you got to back up what you're saying. And that's what goes along with that. Uh, First, um, First Thessalonians 5:21, telling you to prove all things. See, you got to have proof about what you're talking about. Now you're going to Isaiah chapter 8. It says, "To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them." So if you talking and you bringing out the scriptures, you got to be bringing it out from the word. You can't just be running your mouth and it, none of the stuff that you saying is in the Bible. What you saying got to be in the Bible. You got to be coming off of the law and out of the testimony, the testimony of the prophets. Now Peter, backs up the old so-called Old Testament or the prophet Isaiah the apostle Peter backs up his line of thinking let's see here I think it's first Peter first Peter 4 and 11 it says if any man speak let him speak as the oracles of God if any man minister let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified 
through Yahweh Shah Mashiach and to whom the praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So when you go into the scriptures, you got to speak the words. You can't just come out and, 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 and create your own doctrine or your own understanding because you got to go precept upon precept. It, your thoughts got to be backed up by another thought uh, from another line upon another line. Hear a little in the Old Testament or in one section and hear, or hear a little in another section. Now, it say prove all things. Now let's go back to First Thessalonians. Uh, First Thessalonians. Not only is you supposed to prove all things, the line above that it says in verse twenty, despise not prophesying. So if you thinking that prophecy is done away with, you don't deal with prophecy. You uh, you you not going off the scriptures because the scriptures say despise not prophesying okay and let's get revelation revelation 19 uh let's see here verse verse uh 10 it say and i fell at his feet to worship him and he said unto me see you do do it not i am your fellow servant and your brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shah. Worship Yahweh. For the testimony of Yahweh Shah is the spirit of prophecy. So the testimony of Yahweh Shah is the spirit of prophecy, and prophecy is all about Yahweh Shah. So when you're looking at the prophecy, and what's supposed to come to pass is all about the captivity of Israel. Now let's go into Joel because he says it the best. Joel, the third chapter, it tells you what the whole controversy is all about. Now, verse 2, talking about Israel, sons, the sons and the daughters of Israel uh, will start to prophesy. So the sons and the daughters of Israel will start to prophesy. And you got verse 3. It says, um, For behold, this is Joel 3 and 1. For behold, in those days, and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. So it's letting you know he's going to bring back or bring again the issue of slavery. What happened in slavery? The slavery of Judah and Jerusalem. And then in verse 2, he's telling you what he's going to do about that slavery. He said, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my inheritance, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So now slavery is going to be brought back into the, uh, the picture as World War Three is going down. And so that let's go back to First Thessalonians because it's all right there <laughs> in Thessalonians. Let's see here. Now this is in Second Thessalonians, the first chapter. Uh, the first chapter, verse six. It says. Sin, it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Okay, so when you go to Joel, he letting you know he's going to recompense these individuals that put us in slavery. The tribe of 
Judah and Jerusalem. Okay. And that's what he said in um, verse 4 of chapter 3 of Joel. He said, yeah, and what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zion? Speaking of the Hamite African and all the coast of Palestine. Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me uh, swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? And so this is why he um telling them that this, the issue is all about the recompense from the slavery of Judah and Jerusalem. And that's what 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter, verse 6 was talking about. The recompense of Judah and Jerusalem. And what is how is he going to recompense Judah and Jerusalem? How is he going to pay back those who uh, gave tribulation to uh, Judah and Jerusalem? Verse 6, he say, The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecian, that ye might remove them far from their border. Okay, then he said in verse 7, Behold, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them, and will return your recompense upon your own head. Okay, so this is how he's going to recompense those who gave tribulation to the nation of Israel. It says in verse 8, And I will sell your son and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabean. Now the Sabean are another uh, name for the Hamites, the same as Tyre, Zidon, and Palestine. It says, and they shall sell them, the Judah, Judites, or the Israelites, shall, shall sell uh, these Grecian Edomites, the so-called white men, to the Africans. So that's how he's going to recompense these individuals. But that's just one um, way he's going to recompense them. Because he said he's going to gather all nations and plead with them in the, valley of the, uh, in the valley of Jehoshaphat. Because verse 9 is going to let you know what he's talking about. It said, proclaim you this among the Gentiles, prepare war. Wake up the mighty man. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Okay? So, he's telling you to get ready. He's telling these other nations, these Gentiles, and he's telling the Israelites, proclaim this among the Gentiles. Tell the Gentiles that the Lord is coming to repay y'all back for slavery. You see? He's coming back. He's coming to get a recompense for, for, from the slavery and so when you're going to um, let's get Isaiah because we're going we gonna to prove this with precepts precepts upon precepts line upon line here a little there a little speaking with the oracles of God now Isaiah 14 21 it say prepare slaughter what did he say and Joel, prepare war. Proclaim this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Prepare, this is back in Isaiah 14, 21. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. So he's telling the Israelites to prepare war for these other nations. You see, and that's going to be how he recompense these other nations. See, it's a recompense that's going to be had. Because these other nations, uh, they're telling themselves that they can be forgiven for what their forefathers have done and they're inherited everything from their forefathers. When you look at Isaiah 14 and 18, it lets you know 
how these individuals is benefiting off of the captivity of the Israelites. Uh, Isaiah 14 and 18, all the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, everyone in his own house. You see, they put the Israelites into captivity and now they, are, they, have a, they have a glorious kingdom, a glorious house. And that's all that their house means, it's the, their kingdom. They have a glorious homeland that they can go to and to show you that they all in cahoots with the Edomites who have us in captivity when you go to Revelation. Revelation chapter uh, 18 and it tells you also about this recompense. Revelation chapter 18 let's do verse uh, let's do verse 9 it say and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and have lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning so the kings of the earth committed fornication and lived deliciously with her meaning with these Edomites who they sold, who was, uh, who received us uh, from the African. All these other nations was in cahoots with the situation. And he, he used the same terminology in verse 6 of Revelation 18. He said, reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she has filled, filled to her double. So she's gonna get double uh, of the situ of whatever she gave out. She gave out captivity to the Israelites. She gonna get double. You see, and so all of these nations is working together, living this deliciously off the backs of the uh, uh, the Israelites. Now when you go into a uh, song, King David prophesied about what these nations was gonna do. And at the same time, these nations been doing this ever since the Garden of Eden. When you go into Ezekiel 31, it talks about the, the, the other nations that was in the garden envy the chosen uh the chosen ones that was in the nation of adam now let's get this psalm to show you that these other nations always um group together to come to fight against us and there's many precepts on that uh level okay uh let's see here psalms 83 it say uh, talking about these nations in verse 3 in Psalms 83 they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden one verse 4 they have said come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembering verse 5 for they have consulted together with one consent they are confederate against you, nation of Israel. And so all these nations, they are confederate against us. They are they envy us. Let me let me quote that uh, read that in um, Ezekiel right quick. Like he say, prove all things. Let's let's prove that in Ezekiel chapter thirty one. It says in uh, 31 and verse 9, it says, I have made him far fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. You see? So these trees in Edom, these other nations, they envied, they envied the fact that Adam was a chosen 
race that God had made beautiful and gave him his laws laws to uh you know tend to the land and so these other nations always come against the Israelites now let's go into the Maccabees in the Greek captivity because it tells how these nations come against uh, the Israelites by the being led by these Edomites, the so-called white men. Now, First Maccabees five and three it say, then Judas. Now Judas was one of the uh, elders or the leaders of Israel during the the Greek cap or during. Uh, when the Greeks was ruling and fighting against the Israelites it said then Judas fought against the children of Esau in Idumea at a, uh, a rabbitine because they besieged Israel and he gave them a great overthrow and abate their courage and took their spoil okay now watch what happened I'm going to get straight to the point. Uh, in verse 9 it says, And then the heathen that were at Galad assembled themselves together against the Israelites that were in their quarter to destroy them. You see, that's what these other nations do. The jealousy and envy of these nations get them to come against us because they're mad that God chose us and deal with us and so that's why uh, he's going to gather all the nation and war with them let's get that in Revelation 16 Revelation 16 and 14 he said for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. I'm going to jump down to verse 16. He said, And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. So when you look at that in Joel, that's what Joel is talking about. He's gathering these individuals together because they have come against the Israelites and put them in captivity and all and participated all together in the captivity and lived deliciously off of the Israelites. Now when you look at verse 3 of Joel chapter 3, it says, And they cast lots for my people. That's when they slave trade. They trading uh, the, the Israelites, selling them, buying them, and profiting off of them. It says, And have given a boy for an harlot, and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Now, when you look at the wine industry, the rum, and uh, all the wine that is being produced, you got the nation of Israel doing the slave labor. They created uh, the rum, the, the the island that my peoples come from in Antigua. They was calling it Kill Devil. Kill Devil was um, a name that they gave the rum. And so they invented the rum. And so eventually, they start selling this rum and becoming rich off of the sale of the rum because this is a major industry. It was so major that uh, George Washington, he was um, campaigning for president and how he would campaign was give free, wine, free rum to all the people. You see, he would give free rum to the people and uh, you know, they would vote for him because he done gave them some wrong. 
and and it was a major industry it still is a major major industry today and it brought riches and 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 wealth to america and to these edomites so you know it wasn't just they were selling uh the israelites for a case of wine no it wasn't that simple the whole wine industry even in california the wine that was being created was by the end there was enslaving the indians who was the northern kingdom of israel to going the, 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 the grape and wine uh, production fields and produce that off slave labor, off the, the labor of the Indian. And now you got the Mexicans over there who are from the tribe of Issachar. They doing the slave labor to get the wine. So it never stopped. It's still going on today. The, the wine, the wineries is in California. You got down there in the islands all type of wine uh, stuff going on and so uh, the same situation is going on now they living deliciously off the Israelites slave labor you see so Amos backs up who these Grecians was who was selling who was selling who the Israelites were sold to and even in Joel uh, chapter 3 in verse 19, it tells you that it was the Edomites. You see, it was the Africans who was the Egyptians, and it was the Edomites. That was, uh, let me read that. Joel 3 and 19, it says, Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be, a de shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. So that's who was doing all of this um, selling of the Israelites. They was Edomites, calling themselves Grecians and Romans and all this, Britons and Americans. You know, all these different names, but they all went back to the nation of Edom. And uh, Amos, the first chapter, verse six, lets you know that the whole captivity was given, the whole captivity of the Israelites was given to Edom. Verse nine, the whole captivity was delivered up to Edom. And then in verse 11, it, let, uh, it said that Edom, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. So he's not going to forget about what happened. He's going to recompense them for that slavery. He's going to recompense them for still having the Israelites in slavery. When you go into Isaac, no, you're going to Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah chapter chapter 50 Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 33 it says thus says the Lord of hosts the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together and all that took them captives held them fast they refused to let them go so right there let you see that both of these the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom was being oppressed what they was being used with their labor to build up these nations and so these nations can live deliciously off of the Israelites because they come to Babylon to uh, commit fornication uh, to have a uh, pretty much a, a a contract because that's all a marriage is you having a, a contract an agreement to to a union and so they was united in a contract to slay to to benefit off these slaves that america had because when you go into revelation uh 18 verse 13 it tells you at the bottom of verse 13 it said that slaves and the soul they had merchandise of slaves and the souls of men and these other nation was benefiting off this the merchandise the merchants in these other nations they was benefiting and living deliciously due, due to the slaves uh, producing all of these things that they're producing not only that the slaves was, was creating the merchandise 
they was creating the cars, the light bulbs, and all of this industrial revolution. Uh, they had industrial revolution due to the slaves creating everything. So, uh, let's see here. Let's get to punish the, the, the how the, the final punishment. And when he gathered the nation, what is he gonna do? Once he gathered the nation in 1919, it says, uh, and I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. So they was gathered together for the World War III and the army of the Lord is going to destroy them in World War III all because of the slavery, the translated slave trade, and all the other Arab sub here, what is it, sub Saharan uh, slave trade. All the nations benefiting off the slave labor of the Israelites. They all got to pay for that. But it all goes back to the blessing in Genesis 27 that was given to Jacob their forefather that they're gonna have to go into captivity uh, and be sold to the Israelites uh, and paid back for what they did to the Israelites because that was the plan from the beginning in Genesis 27 29 it said let people serve you and nations bow down to you be Lord over your brethren and let thy mother's son bow down to you. So he was supposed to be a ruler. You see, he was supposed to be a ruler and people was going to bow down to him because he would, his children is going to rule. And that's what uh, Second Edges is talking about. Let's get that. Second Edges, uh chapter 6. It says, second, second edge of six at the beginning. It says in verse seven, then answered I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the time? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? So he's saying, what's gonna be the end of uh, part in these two times of these two individuals what's going to be the end of it uh, and so in verse 8 he say and he said unto me from Adam and from Adam unto Isaac when Jacob and Esau were born of him Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau verse 9 for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. So that's why you have uh, Jacob is going to be the beginning of the next world, a rulership, kingdom. That's what Daniel 244 is talking about. That God is going to set up a kingdom that's going to get rid of all these kingdoms. And it's not going to be left to any other people but the Israelites. You see, but it's going to be a recompense of what these uh, other nations did to the Israelites, and it's going to be the Israelites ruling over these other nations due to the blessing that was given to Jacob. But I'm going to leave it there. All praises to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, uh, Bashem Rekakit Dash, double honor to the elders pushing the truth, peace to the elect. Uh, Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans uh, whose seed line go back to the nation of Israel. And our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.